club down to Fairgrounds. I went to school right here, elementary school, one through six, which was called Westside Elementary. Then I went two years over at Jefferson uh, School, clear across, and to walk clear across town. It took me about 45 minutes to walk over there and 45 minutes back. And then and I was in here on the second year that they opened up the high school. Everybody was real close, uh, real friendly. And uh, we had about uh, 200 in our senior class, but we were the first school that integrated in 1954. I was a sophomore, and it went as smooth as silk. And you know, Little Rock Central integrated in 57, and we know where it integrated three years before they did. And we never had one bobble. Everybody got along great. Being from South Federal, you know, the old fairgrounds, if you will, old growing up in that area, he, he's kind of self-made. He learned early in life that you, you get out of what you put into something. Just did a masterful job, and I think those things built in him an inner value system that uh, he wanted to give to others. Betty Wimmer was my high school basketball coach. Good coach. He, he was a good representation of Federal schools. And Harry Vandegriff was one of my mentors, even though I didn't play football. Harry asked me to come out football and play a tight end or something. The summer of my junior year, they started fall practice down here at the Army, Army Playfield. And so I was in there getting my equipment, sitting down on the bench there and getting my equipment, getting ready to put it on. And here comes Benny Wimburn. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to play football. No, you're not. Put that stuff up. You're not playing football. And so I quit. I, I, I was in my football. <laughs> but that's the kind of guys they were. They cared about what happened, you know. So as he became a more skilled athlete and he learned so many things and he saw that as a ticket for an opportunity for college, his uh, experience at Coffeyville Junior College was with Jack Hartman. He's always had great pride that he played for Jack Hartman and then he went on to Panhandle over in Guyman, Oklahoma, a small school over there. I tore up my knee my junior year and I went up for a rebound and tore up my left knee and had to put in a cast for six months. That was the end of it. As you grow older and you grow wiser and you have some of those uh, experiences that tell you that it's time to, to take your game in a different direction, I think he realized that early. Uh, but he was always involved in the game. I got thinking I probably did more for sports after I got out of high school than I did playing. He was the basketball coach and many times the basketball coach, especially back then, would have other assigned duties, so he helped in football, he helped in track. And some of those people that have assigned duties that are outside of their interests kind of take that lighthearted. He didn't. He would be working at those other sports just as hard as he did at basketball. I enjoyed coaching. I let Harry Vandegrift taught me and go into administration over at Woodland, and uh, I turned him down twice, but the third time, I couldn't do it. I couldn't let Mr. Van Griff down, so I took the job at Woodland. George learned a lot of valuable lessons through his travels in athletics, and I think he wanted to give some of that back, not only to athletes as a coach, but also from the leadership position that he could exert at the state level in terms of uh, how you develop policies and how you work with schools and how you get a system that's fair in terms of reclassification. We had to do reclassification every two years. We had a hard time putting schools in their areas. I mean, Mountain Home, we couldn't find a place for Mountain Home because they had a, they left a 6A school and there wasn't nobody to play. They had to go to Little Rock to play. Every trip had to go to Little Rock. You know, we went to fast pitch softball when I was on the AAA and we put in pole ball for women. We had a big battle over state tournaments. Everybody wanted to hold the state tournaments so we had to vote on who was going to get state tournaments because that meant a lot to the community. And we finally got to the point that the schools that got a state tournament had to give all the revenue to the AAA, all the revenue at the gate, 100%. Frank Broyles tried to get the state tournament up here at Feville, and he wouldn't give a percent. Well, he got beat out by Joan Burrow or something, because they said, we'll give 100%. So, you know, what are we going to do? I still vote for Arkansas. <laughs> George such a man of his word that people respected him highly and they would take his wise counsel and uh, I think we as a state benefited from his leadership that he had uh, down there for a number of years. His impact on young people 
over the length of his career, both as a coach and as an administrator, if you will, and later on as a superintendent, has just impacted uh, positively so many uh, parents, so many students over the years. The fellas got a good reputation. Uh, they got a good reputation. They're well respected throughout the state. And that, that means a lot to me. Graduating from Pell, when you're well respected like they are, that means a lot. Everywhere I go, I say, I graduated from Pell High School. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm real tickled about that. I would have never got where I got if I hadn't played basketball for left Pell High School. Because that gave me a stepping stone to play college ball free, which I couldn't afford to go on if I hadn't played basketball. So that's, I really owe a lot to Pebble High School and Benny Wimbledon.